So what do we have going on here? Uh, this is a table that was in part inspired by uh, Norm Abram on the New Yankee Workshop, as well as the Dubby Jig. Back in the late 1980s, mid to late 1980s, there was a company called Dubby. They may still be out there that was hitting all the, the woodworking show circuit, showing off a jig that's very similar to this. And Shopsmith kept, kept hearing from customers asking, do you have something like the Dubby? What does it do? It's very similar to your miter gauge, although it's designed to aid you when cutting larger pieces of stock. So let's face it, the miter gauge has what, about a six inch face on it. And when you're working with larger pieces of lumber or, or pieces of sheet stock, uh, it's not a lot of surface to guide you through the blade accurately. Where this one, I can have this long aluminum fence aligned, uh, actually not just to 90 degrees, but even some angles as well, to help guide me through. And best of all, the wood is sliding on a table that's moving with the wood. So we're not getting friction between the wood and the table of the shopsmith. I don't recall if the sandpaper face was a stock part or something that they came up with later, but regardless, you can use any peel and stick sandpaper, though Shopsmith does sell some paper specifically for this purpose. Um, this is designed to be used at 90 degrees, but they also have set into this a series of uh, threaded inserts that are drilled in place to allow us to rotate this fence to angles. Um, rarely ever did this, um, but I've got three cap screws on the, on the front side. You leave the one that's closest to the blade locked in place, and then you remove the others and move them to these various parts. Now, how do you align this thing is the big question. The miter bar has a little bit of, of play when you loosen the three cap screws that hold it in place. Um, so we can get a little bit of adjustment there, but once we have it close, we can really lock it in by adjusting the fence. And one of the best tools for that is just get yourself a good aluminum, this could be a reflection there, good aluminum square um, or, or drafting triangle. These are inexpensive. You can get them out of aluminum. You can get them out of plastic. They're typically pretty accurate. And we're going to go against the, uh, the blade here. What I typically do is try to position it against two carbide teeth. And, okay, it's square. I don't know how that happened, but let's say it wasn't square. Let's, um, let's loosen two of these bolts and we'll knock that out of alignment. Uh, using this square, we can move the fence till we're happy with that alignment and then lock the fence in place. It never happens. <laughs> All right, so one of the problems with this setup, and this is something I noticed when I was an academy instructor for Shopsmith and uh, called to their attention was, as I'm making a cut, let's say one of the most common things I did with mine was to use it for, uh, for cutting rough stock to size, do you know, my initial cross cut before I do uh, all my jointing and ripping and jointing again. Um, is as I'm cutting this stock, it wants on this side of the blade to sink down because it's not supported on that side of the blade. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, there you can imagine that side, there's no support. So what I did was I just added a piece of stock over here and because I was using a 510, um, I had a couple of dowels and I would just drop it through the two holes that are in the main table of the 510, 520. There are two holes there. We use that to hold the shaper fence in place. Um, our engineers took a look at what I was doing and basically one-upped me by adding the ability to lock that into the miter slot. So this was an ex accessory. Turned out this was one of the top selling accessories at Shopsmith while I was working there. And uh, I got a little something from them for doing this, coming up with this idea. But uh, it was absolutely perfected by Jim McCann and Dave Flora. Uh, this is not dead center. And so as you install this on your table, you want to check it to make sure that the position it's in gets you the closest to the blade. And then we'll lock that in place. That locks in place with, oh, 
a flat blade screwdriver, my favorite. And all this is doing is spreading that little bar in the miter slot. And then with that, we now have support for our stock as we make our cut. I should probably get a dust collector hooked up. Super easy, super comfortable. I don't feel at all unsafe with that. Um, if I were cutting, let's say, a 14-foot board in half, today I would use my chop saw. Um, but back when this was the only tool I had at my disposal, my, my shop smith and my cross-cut sliding jig, um, I would call my bride or my kids to come and help. And uh, their instructions were to be off the end of the machine, ready to catch, but not to lift, not to pull, not to push, just there to support just in case that stock would drop. Now, if I'm cutting stock that's so large that I'm, I'm at fear of that, I have with the 510 and the 520, the ability to add floating tables on each side. Um, or you could, if you're getting, again, really long, like I mentioned, a 14 foot board, which is crazy talk, um, you can even use some other sort of support stand off to the side. And before we go, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed something interesting about this crosscut sliding jig, and that is it's designed, mine is designed for a Model 500. I have no washer to run in the T-slot. Uh, golly, isn't that a disadvantage? I mean, with that washer in there, as you slide it out here for wider cross cuts that helps to support the stock yeah um the thing is the 500 version has a slightly longer bar and i know a trick let me share this trick with you whether you've got a 500 or a 510 something that you can do is add your rip fence to your extension table you may remember this fence that I use when I'm ripping stock to give me a little bit of support on the back side of the blade. Well, if I take this same piece and mount it this direction on my fence, and again, I've got some, some uh, Shopsmith T-nuts here that I will use along with a couple, uh, by the way, bit, Bittner bolts. <laughs> if you don't know about this, this is a clever idea that's not original, but part of it's mine. Uh, that's a Bittner nut invented by a guy named Bill Bittner. He uh, takes a quarter 20 nut and presses it into a, a half inch nut, and it basically acts as a knurled knob. But in this case, by passing, uh, oh, and there's that nut there happens to be a nylock locking nut. Um, so I've got a bolt passing through that, and what I've got now is essentially any length of, uh, of knob that I need because all I have to do is adjust that bolt in and out and I am good to go. And I'm going into those T-nuts. And now I have support, even with this 500 model jig, I guess I better lower this down, huh? And whether I have a 510, 520, or model 500, uh, I like this setup just to give me that support. Where does that take me here? On my, uh, on my 510, with no hands, I'm at, uh, at 20 inches on my setup for this cut. I've got, oh, uh, about eight inches of the bar in the slot. Uh, I'm good to go. So is the Shopsmith crosscut sliding table or sled a must own tool? Nah, but <laughs> if you don't have a, uh, another means of doing wide crosscuts, and if you don't have a, a high quality chop saw and you wanna make these types of cuts on your Shopsmith, then yeah, I think it or something like it are ideal. But if you're going to use one of these, a must have feature 
is something to support your stock on the offcut side. I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots. Make it a great day.